Oh, Broadway. All right. Um, all right. Yeah. So when learning chords, I actually find that it's uh, or chord shapes like this I actually find it's useful to do tunes that have lots of chords um, because it makes you apply it, um, you know, in different places all the time. But uh, let's see what you got here. So E flat six. Where did you start your um, voicing? The, the one that we worked on last time. That's, yeah, nice. So it's like this. Right on. That's right. Um, well, yeah, actually, we talked a little bit about this last time. If we start from the third, it would be implying it's a four chord because it would have the sharp 11. Um, now, if we started from the sixth, which would be the uh, eighth fret, then what we have is obviously we have a sixth, right? So it's, it's sort of like you just have your, your old voicing, your major seventh skeleton, that would be a sixth fret, fifth fret, and seventh fret on the A, D, and G string, right? And then if you put your pinky down on the eighth fret of the high E string, right? That's the shape we have here. Only difference is that root, we move up an octave, to be on the fourth fret of the B string. So that's why we have this big stretch. Anyway, so what we just have here is a major seven, you know, skeleton, root seventh and third, um, and the sixth on top. All right. Now, that would technically be an E flat major 13 chord. The reason being is that it has a 7. So if we have a 6th and a 7, that 6 must be above the 7. You know, which is why we call it a 13. Um, if you got rid of the 7th and just did, let's say, a root, first of all, it would be very hard to play. And it would also have a repeat note. But that would be a truer 6 chord. Uh, you could replace the 7 maybe with another 6 and you'd have that note repeated. Um, also quite challenging to play. All the same though, the voicing that we have is a major 7, um, and oddly enough, if you thought this was hard, it's easier than those uh, variations where we double the 13. And it's not really necessary to double it anyway, but it's what would take it from being a 13 to a 6 chord, as the song asks for, a 6 chord. So this chord is more modern. You know, then like um, the chord that's written, which would usually be played by people like this. Yeah, it sounds it sounds really grouped together. Yeah, but that's the way you'd hear a lot of tunes. You know, and old tunes especially. If you heard like a two chord to a five chord, and then it like we're talking olden days. Like that's really popular. Yeah, it's nice. Um, so all we did really was took this chord, added a major 7, and, and kept our 13. And that's what we have here. It's the 6, rather. So now it's a 13. So anyway, yeah. But now here's the thing that really, even though, even though starting that shape from the 3rd as the highest note is a 4 chord, or it implies a four, the Lydian sound, it's got a... It implies it's a four chord. It has the Lydian sound because it has a sharp 11. You can still do that in place of one chord. It won't be diatonic, right? Um, if you were really being diatonic, you would have to have this note, which would be actually quite harsh because you have... That'd be, that'd be a major 11, right? Um, and the major 11 means that it has a third and a fourth. And that's so, you know, that's super tense. Um, it sounds like that, except this note is, uh, uh, one of the notes is up an octave. But people do it all the time, like, not in the super old school days where you hear chords like this, you know, someone might play down the major scale. 
that sound. But in 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 what people would do in more hip modern stuff is they would they would you'd hear instead of a six chord, you'd hear a major seven chord. And people would play. They could do four because leaving um, just doing the chord tones doesn't say one way or another what four it should be. But um, you could do Lydian for that reason. That's uh, the, that's actually, I mean, it's a different key and everything, but an example would be blue and green, where the first chord is, um, in the book it says G minor. You don't have to worry about change, switch to it, because I'm just moving through. It's just an example. We, we should go through the song and figure out another chord and apply all that. But the idea is like, it's the first song it says in the book is it says G minor 7, right? The relative major of that would be B flat major 7. Um, and uh, the first note you hear is an E note, All right? So an E, that is, um, the E would be a sharp 11, right? So the way I always play blue and green would be starting with a B flat major 7 sharp 11. And uh, I didn't come up with that. Um, that's the way Scott Henderson suggested doing it. And uh, I think he got it actually maybe from like the record or something. So anyway, um, point is like that, that song moves from a, a, a four, it's the first chord is a four chord. And then the five chord of the key of D major. And then goes to D minor instead. And then it goes down a half step and does dominant, which is a tritone substitution for a G7 chord. So really it's like two five and then your one would be C major but it goes to C minor instead so it's like two five and it goes to an F7 chord so basically what you have is you have the chord progression that goes four five of a new key two of a new key or two five and then two five of another new key and then it goes to the first chord again, like what would go to a one, but really it's a sharp 11 chord. So it goes to the four chord again. It never, never has a one chord there. Then it goes to the five and then you hear the, the two, like you, you thought two, five, like before, but this time it goes two, um, and actually be perceived more as like a, I would think like a minor one chord, right? Cause we came from a five, one, except the five was dominant. So it's kind of a key change there to an E7, which is the five of A, A. So instead of going to A, it goes to A minor. Kind of like how it went from A to D minor, A7 to D minor. Here it goes to E7 to A minor. And then it's just got another measure of D minor and it starts over. Anyway, the point is like that song, um, whether it ever has a major one chord, you know, is sort of debatable. But the thing is, major seven chord, right, has a major triad with a seven on top, and it says nothing about the scale tone. So really, you could put the scale tones however you want. Um, you mean, it's dangerous depending on your situation. If you're a piano player and you just play a million notes, and you play an 11, that's, first of all, it's really tense anyway, so that's why most people play sharp 11 instead, which is Lydian, which implies a four chord. But um, if they played 11 and you think, well, I can just play a, like our first chord in Broadway is E flat six, we'll call it E flat major seven. And let's say you go, you know, as like a nice sound, then you just clash with the piano player because you're not agreeing on the modes that you're using anymore. Um, and that's why the most popular voices in comping are voicings are um, the ones that only have the bare essentials root, seventh and third, like this, right?
Yeah, yeah. You you could you could play Liddy in one moment or a major scale one moment, and then descend Lydian. You know, and you could mix them together that way. Um, anyways, so that's that's a thorough, I think, answer to uh, the question you asked and. Um, the questions that are implied by the questions you asked, like the other ones that you didn't ask about, like starting with a four chord or can I do Lydian? The secret is you can do Lydian over every major seven chord because it doesn't change anything fundamental about the chord. It doesn't change the chord tones. It's just a scale tone thing. So um, yeah, that's that.